This is your jump start into Checkpoint. Let's begin. So here's the play-by-play -play in the Checkpoint architecture. We, you and I, as administrators, are going to sit at a piece of software called Smart Dashboard that's sitting on a Windows computer. That's where you and I create policies like network address translation and permissions. And when we create those policies, all that information is stored on a management server. This management server is very likely running the latest and greatest flavor of Gaia, which is the operating system, the platform, on top of which our Checkpoint policies and systems are running. Now the challenge is, if we create all of our policies and they sit at the manager, how in the world do we get them to the gateway? So the answer is, once we create all the policies at the manager, we then instruct the management server to push those policies out to its gateways that the manager is managing. So in our case, this management server is going to push the policy out to firewall 1. Also for the purpose of this micro-nugget, we're already going to assume that the firewall's interfaces are configured and the association, the secure internal communications between the management server and the firewall have already been set up and are in place. So what we'll do is we'll create a brand new policy. We'll set up some permissions for this internal network to go to the outside world. We'll also set up network address translation because these guys are on the 10.1.1.0 network. And with that policy created, we'll instruct the manager to push that policy out to the gateway so it can go ahead and start enforcing those rules. Then as a test, we'll simply take a PC on this 10.1.1 network and verify that you and I can get out to the live network through the gateway. Our first task is to create the policy. So I'm here at Smart Dashboard to create a new policy. We're simply going to create some rules. Our first rule I'm going to say, I want to call it Internet Access. And let's go ahead and permit our internal network, which is 10.1.1.0. And I've already made a network object that represents that. And we'll just drag that object up here and say, if the source is 10.1.1.0 and they're going anywhere, and for any protocol, we'll go ahead and we will allow that traffic. In fact, we'll also go ahead and log it as well. So that gives the permission for our users on the inside to go out to the internet. But however, we also need to set up network address translation. We can't let a 10.1.1 source address out in the wild. We'd never get a reply. There's two different ways of setting up NAP for this internal network. One is we could go to the details of this network by double clicking on it. Then on the NAT tab, simply click on the checkbox that says add automatic NAT. And we're going to hide behind the IP address that the firewall is already using on the outside. In some other vendors, they would call this port address translation or PAT. So we'll go ahead and click on OK. The other way we could have done that is going to the actual firewall object itself, double clicking on that firewall object, and then going to the NAT tab and saying, you know what, I want to automatically hide everybody behind my outside address. And that would do the same result. We don't need to have it in both places. I just wanted to show you both options. So we'll click on OK, and then we'll save that policy, and then we'll go ahead and push it out. Now this install policy option says, hey, Mr. Manager, you know that beautiful policy we just made with NAT and that permission? Let's go ahead and push that out to the firewall so it can go ahead and enforce those rules. So we'll click on OK. It does a quick verification of the policy, and then it's pushing it out right now out to firewall one. So we have a success message, so we'll go ahead and close that. And now we'll test it. Let's bring up a browser from a device on the inside network at 10.1.1.something. And let's test this by going to CBT Nuggets. And sure enough, that works. Now, the other really cool thing about Checkpoint, it has amazing tracking capabilities. So if we're back here at Smart Dashboard, we can use this dropdown and use a tool called Smart View Tracker. This is a very effective way of looking at log files. This button right here allows us to go to the very bottom of the log files, and that's where the newest information is. If we want to take a look at the details, for example, we could click on any one of these. So here in the Smart View Tracker, it's showing us there's the source address, there's the destination. It was a DNS request. There was our source port. There's the name of the policy. There's the rule number that said, please allow this traffic. The rule name was Internet Access. And right here, it's showing us the details for the network address translation that took place. So the translated source address, it was 10.1.1.50. As it went out to the internet, it got translated to the outside address of the firewall, which happens to be 192.168.1.111. And there is yet another NAT device between this firewall and the internet doing NAT again. And with hide NAT, we're also changing the source port. So the original source port was 59,000 and change. The new source port is 37,000 and change. And that, my friend, is how you can create and implement a policy in under five minutes in a checkpoint deployment. I had a blast, and I'm so glad that you've joined me for this micro nugget. Hey, if you're looking for more training on Gaia or R76, or you're looking to get a CCSA, hey, come and check out our course at cbtnuggets.com. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.